Howdy y'all, Fuzzy Biker here at Baxter Cycle in the Mighty Mini Tropolis of Marty, Iowa. This is video three in the series of three of this particular motorcycle. Baxter Cycle lent me this, had me put about 300 miles on it. And boy, was that an eye-opening experience. It's really quite an interesting bike. It's a Royal Enfields Himalayan Scram 411. Now this is the new one. This is my Himalayan right here. This is the standard, what I'll call the standard Himalayan. Oh, wow. They both have a uh, 411 cc overhead cam, two valve engine, air cooled, oil cooled. There's an oil cooler. They both have an oil cooler like that. The transmission is a five speed transmission. And uh, this one actually works a lot smoother than mine. That's, that's kind of a trait with the uh, Himalayans or the Royal Enfield bikes. Every year they seem to do just a little bit better. So they put out about 24 horsepower, about 24 foot pounds of torque. That's uh, 32 Newton meters. Plenty of torque. I, I think they have plenty of torque. The, the torque all comes in right above, right above uh, idle. So wheelbase on this particular hot rod is 57.3 inches. That's 1,455 millimeters. Ground clearance is 7.9 inches. That's about three fourths of an inch less than this one. That's uh, about 200 millimeters. The seat height on this one is 31.3 inches. That's 795 millimeters. Now that's with a stock seat. And I just realized that this is not a stock seat. It says both have a four gallon gas tank. That's about 15 liters. This one weighs 408 pounds, about 185 kilograms, where this one weighs about 200 kilograms in stock form. This is not stock. And that's about uh, 439 pounds. So there's a little weight advantage to this. Now that doesn't sound like much, but that's 7%. It does, you do feel it. The tire on the front tire on this one, this is kind of the big one of the, we'll talk about differences, but the front tire on this one is a 190-19 on this one, where on this one, this has got the 21 inch tire on there. You can probably see the difference there in height. And I think this is a 90-90-21. So it's a little bit slimmer, a little bit taller. This one's a little bit wider, a little bit shorter. Both bikes have 300 millimeter disc brakes on the front with a dual piston bibri and ABS front and back, by the way. And the rear is a 240 millimeter disc with a single piston vibrate. So what have I learned in the last few days riding this particular motorcycle? Well, I don't know what y'all are going to think about this, but this is actually the superior motorcycle 90% of the times. It's like they took this bike and refined it and made it just better in all the average ways that a person uses a motorcycle. If you're going to use a motorcycle for more back roading, you know, two lane blacktops, things like that, more around town, uh, this is definitely the bike to use. It will do gravel just fine. I've ridden, I didn't ride this one, but I rode another one on gravel and it, and it performed just admirably. Uh, the big difference there would be that this one has a 21 inch tire and that uh, really gives an advantage in the uh, rough stuff. What do I like about this one over the other ones? Well, there are uh, just a couple things, honestly. One is, we'll start with the simpler things. I love this instrument panel. I love this. You know, it, it, it's nothing against the stock Himalayan panel. I'll go show you that real quick. I think when that one came out, it was dated. The first video I did in Himalayan, I called that a dated panel. I like that, it works great. However, this works better. Now there's no tack on this, but I don't think that's an issue. Check it out. Everything you need is in this little space right here. All the little, you know, the time, the gear, the trip meter A, trip meter B, odometer, the fuel gauge is right here up on the top. You know, this big sweeping speedometer on the top is very easy to read. Just glance down, it's right there. Neutral light, battery light, engine light, ABS light, and then the blinkers are down here. I wish the blinkers were up higher, but you know what, I can live with that. Another thing that's connected to that that I like is this information button up here. On the Himalayan, I have, to bu I have a button up here on the dash that I have to push to change things down here. On this one, this is just a button right here. And if you look right there, right now we're on odometer, 365 miles. Trip A, 102 miles. Trip B, 259.8 miles. Very well done. So that's something I really like about this. The next thing I would say is the power. Now this bike is about 7% lighter. And then uh, it has the Zard exhaust pipe, which probably took another little bit of bit, a little bit of weight off of it, and has also added a little bit to the low and mid range, I believe. But uh, this bike has a significant amount of power. It feels like it has more power than this one. Now this one is a heavier bike, stock. It has a larger windscreen. I've added bags. And put it also has these very heavy Dunlop Trailmax Mission tires on it. Now those are great tires for dirt roading. This one's got about 15,000 miles, by the way. This back one. So the big thing I really like about this bike is it's handling. That's where it really scores big. It handles better in virtually every single way. It's lighter handling, it's more nimble, it drives around town much better. It's a more, far more maneuverable going down the road. You see a tar snake or something like that, you can whip around it much easier. 
it feels like it breaks better whether it does or not. I don't know. It's lighter, so maybe it does. It just seems to be much more responsive in the steering position realm. Now, that's because this bike is made to be more stable on gravel. This bike is made to be more stable on the rough stuff, you know, with the bigger tires and the heavier weights. And But uh, for overall riding, this is a far superior bike over that one. It, it almost hurts me to say that, you know, but uh, honestly, I love this bike. It's a great bike. I'm not willing to trade this bike for that bike. And I'll tell you the reasons for that here in a minute. But if I didn't have either one of these bikes and had to buy a new bike, I would really be looking at this one hard. So uh, what are the advantages of this one over that one? Uh, it, it all starts right here. Weather protection. I have not found good weather protection for this motorcycle. This one has, you know, with the stock, it has a little short fairing like this one. And uh, that may not seem like much, but look at that in relation to the rider seat. You know, that puts uh, a lot of pressure right off your chest. Right. And I'm able to buy this aftermarket windshield. I found the biggest one I could find. I just love that thing. It's a, this is my all-weather bike, and I love it for that reason. Uh, the next thing I would say is the uh, luggage carrying capacity. This has these built-in racks from the factory. You can get the rear racks for that bike. So that's the same, but this is different. And a lot of people will put gas cans on here, bags, toolkits, you know, all kinds of stuff. So if you're going to be more, you know, touring kind of guy, this might be the bike you'd want in that sense. And then lastly is the tire. You know, this 21 inch tire is just awesome in the roughest roads. You know, I, I do a lot of roads where there's a lot of uh, rutting and, you know, just rough stuff or big piles of gravel or stuff that's, you know, where you need the stability. And this larger tire will not only drive over and through things, it gives it that little bit more centrifugal force, keeps the bike upright a little easier. The bike seems far more stable. And by the way, when I put this heavier Dunlop Trail Max Mission on the front, it really improved that stability quite a bit. It also took away from the nimbleness. So this bike going down the highway, if you see something in the road, you can get around it, but you can really, you know, you feel yourself pushing on it to get around it. This bike, it just goes right around. I mean, it's just much, much lighter handling. Uh, so add-ons that they did to this bike that I want to point out. I'll start with these bar risers. I just love these. I didn't realize that they were on there when I got the bike several days ago. But uh, when I saw them, I was just very impressed with them. And I'm actually thinking I might put those on my bike. That's how impressed I am with them. It's a very upright seating position with those bar risers on there. Another thing that I just figured out was the seat. This is not a stock seat. And that was also one of the things I was going to complain about. Uh, the stock Himalayan seat does the same thing where it swoops. It kind of pushes you forward, at least it does me. And I had to keep pushing myself back. Now this seat's very wide in the back. And I found that to be very comfortable once I got used to the idea of pushing myself back. And then the third thing, and this is the most important thing, this is Ard pipe. It's an absolutely beautiful pipe. There are two pipes I like for the Royal Enfield. It's the Zard and it's the AEW Thunder pipe. Those are my two favorite pipes. They have the best sound, they have the best look. They do more for power, you know, mid-range, low-end power than any of the other ones I've ridden. Nothing against the other ones, they're just fine. Those are my two favorites. The AEW and the Zard are both available here at Baxter Cycle, BaxterCycle.com. But uh, look at this thing. Now this one was, uh, they made this work on this bike. The blinker got a little hot here, so I put this tape underneath here. They're gonna put a different blinker system on the back of this, so that'll, that won't be a problem. But isn't that just a lot of good sound out of that pipe? It was uh, a nice, torquey sound, beefy sound, but it wasn't overly loud. And that's what I also like about the AEW pipe. It has a very good sound, adds power, but it's not overly loud. Zard. Just gorgeous. They make gorgeous, gorgeous pipes. Other than that, what would I do to this bike? If I were to buy this bike, I would try to figure out some sort of wind protection. I would look for some sort of carrying capacity, a rack or a bag on one side maybe, something like that. I would keep uh, the Seats on there until they wore out, but then I would replace them with another tire that was equally road worthy, pavement worthy. Um, you know, a tire that'll do off, off-road, but, uh, you know, works, works pretty darn good on the pavement. Uh, these tires are much heavier, and I think they would affect the handling, and I don't, I, this bike handles, this bike handles so light and so well that I just, you know, I wouldn't want to change that. That's one of the key characteristics of this motorcycle. Um, I'm going to compare this real quick to my Classic. Now, that's really a reach. Uh, the Classic's a lot less power. It's a much smaller bike. 
But this has a lot of the same traits in that it's a very good town bike. I was in town, I needed to run to the store. I put this net on there because I would, could carry groceries, but it was very easy to push out of the garage. It's actually simpler to push out of the garage than that. And the only thing I can figure is this has got the heavier tires and it's got all this bulk up here. And no, it, it just performed very well. You know, uh, it has kind of that Zen thing, but not really to the extent that the Classic does. That Classic is a real special motorcycle when you're, you know, when you want to be in your own mind and driving by yourself and feeling the, you know, feeling and enjoying the art of the ride. And uh, this is close. And I really appreciate that. So, recap. 90% of the time, this is going to be a better bike. 90, 95% of the time, better handling. I like the uh, gauge a lot better, comfortable seat, loads of, uh, a lot more torque, a lot more power at the bottom end because of the little bit less weight. Uh, this has better weather protection, has the luggage carrying capacity, and has that beautiful 21 inch front tire. If you're gonna ride the rough stuff, that's a really nice thing to have. Now I would say if you're interested in Himalayan, get yourself down here to Baxter Cycle, Mighty Mini Tropical Samarni, Iowa, and I would drive both. And I would drive that one first, and then I would drive that one and you should evaluate how you think you're going to ride the bike. If you think you're going to ride, I ride about half dirt on that motorcycle. If you think you're going to do that, definitely get that one. If you think you're going to ride dirt maybe 10 or 20 percent of the time, I would highly recommend this bike. I made the mistake of considering this like the little brother of this. It's not. It's a bike all on its own. It rides, it handles, it does so many things so well and I really did appreciate it. It's a great bike. Now, it's a pretty nice day out here. I think I'm going to go for a ride. Wahoo!